thank you very much for uh, for asking me to speak uh, at uh, this uh, very important uh, uh, seminar or conference. And also, uh, I want to say that I, uh, well, I'm not sure if uh, President Dilma Rousseff is still here. Uh, let me tell you that uh, as far as I know, all the Chinese scholars uh, uh, just respect uh, you very much. Uh, we always remember your uh, tenure as a president uh, uh, of Brazil. And we hope that uh, your party will win uh, in the coming election in Brazil. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about uh, China's relationship uh, uh, with Latin America. Uh, you know, China wishes to develop a relationship, not only with the developed countries, but also with Latin America, Africa, and other uh, developing countries in the world. In the past two decades or so, as you know, that China's relationship uh, uh, with Latin America have been uh, developing very, very rapidly in political, economic, uh, people to people exchanges and uh, all kinds of areas. Now, uh, first of all, I want to talk about uh, the so-called nature of this uh, bilateral relationship. Uh, you know that uh, the well-known uh, economist from Argentina, Rob Prebish, was well known for his uh, center periphery theory or the so-called dependency theory. Uh, uh, as far as I know, uh, according to uh, this theory, the periphery or the developing countries like Latin America and Africa depend heavily on the center the rich countries in areas of market access, capital needs, technology, etc. <laughs> now, uh, uh, some of my friends uh, in Latin America uh, told me that uh, China Latin America relationship is something like center periphery. And I said, no, China Latin America relationship does not fit into the center periphery structure. China is the second biggest economy indeed, but it is still a developing country. And if you go to the Western part of China, well, you will still see some kind of poverty. So China is still doing its best uh, to uh, promote economic growth. So China's relationship with Latin America is South-South cooperation based on mutual benefits, okay? So this is the nature of this kind of a bilateral relationship. Well, in the process of de uh, uh, developing its relationship with Latin America or any other regions of the world, China never considers ideological difference as a barrier. Yes, it is true that uh, uh, China is a country uh, walking on the road of socialism uh, under the leadership of the uh, Communist Party of China. Uh, uh, but uh, we never uh, care about uh, the so-called ideological differences when we want to promote a relationship with other countries, including Latin America. Now, for instance, the Communist Party of China has built a relationship with all kinds of political parties with different uh, political orientations, okay. The second point I, I want to mention is uh, the, the so-called results of this bilateral relationship. And I would, I would like to say that it's a win-win partnership. China's economic relationship with Latin America, investment, trade, et cetera, have contributed to Latin American economic and the social progress in the following ways. First, Chinese investment has made up for the shortage of capital accumulation in Latin America. Secondly, Chinese trade with the region has diversified its market access. Uh, everybody knows that China has become the biggest trade partner 
for almost 10 countries in Latin America. Mm. And of course, we have to say that Latin America has also contributed to China's economic and social progress. We cannot, uh, we cannot ignore the contributions made by Latin America to the economic and the social progress in China. Latin America is an important market for China. Latin America exports a large amount of resources to China because China, China's economy is developing so fast. So we need lots of uh, resources from, uh, from foreign countries like Latin America. Latin America joins hands with China in many world economic areas, okay? So, so we, we, as Chinese scholars, I will say we should be grateful to China's, uh, 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 to Latin America's uh, contributions to our economic uh, uh, growth and uh, social progress. Mm. A friend in need is a friend indeed. Uh, China and Latin America have cooperated well in the struggle against the COVID-19 pandemic. In the post-pandemic years, more cooperation between the two sides will be needed. You know, uh, uh, just not long ago, I just read an article by, our, uh, by a scholar from a kind of a think tank in the US. Uh, she said that uh, China can be the so-called white knight uh, uh, for Latin America or China can save Latin America. No, I don't believe China can, uh, can save Latin America, but China can help Latin America to go out of the, uh, the so-called twin pandemics, uh, pandemic of COVID-19 and the pandemic of poverty. So let's work together uh, hand, hand in hand. Uh, now, the third issue I'm going to talk about uh, is the future of the China's relationship uh, with Latin America. Uh, uh, in order to further promote uh, the bilateral relationship, China and Latin America need uh, to deal with the following issues. Uh, first, better understanding. Better understanding of each other through more people-to-people -people exchanges are very important uh, in order to can uh, uh, consolidate trust between our two sides. We need to promote uh, mutual understanding. Geographical distance, different political social systems and the language barriers have made it difficult to know each other. Yes, this is a problem. Uh, so uh, I think uh, that in the future we can uh, do something to, uh, 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 to promote better understanding. Uh, better understanding can diffuse misunderstanding, misperception, and misjudgment. Mm -hmm. And tourism, internet publications, exchanges between the media, academic, and students are helpful for better understanding of each other. Uh, I'm very uh, proud to say that uh, for the time being, I have six uh, students from Latin America with a scholarship from the Chinese government. So I would encourage the audience to apply for scholarship from the Chinese government to study in universities in Shanghai, in Beijing, in all of China, okay? So welcome to study in China. Mm. Now, the second issue uh, is uh, something about the global issues. Both China and Latin America are victims of so many global issues. Uh, they have also suffered from hegemony, unilateralism, and protectionism. So, uh, so uh, more cooperation is needed in the bilateral and the multilateral areas to push forward global governance and uphold genuine multilateralism. Mm. The third issue I think is very important is about uh, the US effect. Uh, Rex Tillerson, the former Secretary of State and uh, uh, the first uh, one year also under the Trump administration uh, said, the Monroe Doctrine is as relevant today as it was on the day it was written. Oh, uh, I'm very, very sorry to hear that. Uh, 
US government officials, scholars, the media, etc., are very, very concerned about the, develop, uh, the, uh, the development of China's relationship with Latin America. Mm. Now, here, let me quote Evan Ellis. Well, I, uh, I know him very well, and he, he knows me very well. Actually, uh, in a certain sense, we are very good friends. Uh, uh, we have met many, many times. He said, uh, uh, for a testimony uh, not long ago, uh, less than one year ago, he said, it is not necessary to show a malevolent PRC, People's Republic of China intentions with respect to its activities in Latin America and the Caribbean to conclude that the current and the long-term implications of that engagement are grave for, for prosperity, democracy, and the liberties in the region, as well as the security and the strategic position uh, of the United States. Uh, uh, well, I would believe, uh, well, I would say that uh, Evan Ellis is one of the uh, most uh, 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 well-known scholars in, in the US uh, uh, to study China's relationship uh, with Latin America. But uh, I don't know why he's not so uh, not so friendly towards China. <laughs> uh, okay. So as a matter of fact, China never wishes to challenge the traditional sphere of influence of the U.S. in Latin America. Uh, China can develop its relationship with the U.S. Why not with Latin America? Mm, China should should not be blamed for the terrible US-Cuba, US-Venezuela relationship, okay? Mm. China's economic relationship uh, with Latin America is good for the region's prosperity. A prosperous Latin America is good for the US. So hopefully there will be US-China cooperation in Latin America. So let's see whether or not in the future there will be a win-win-win triangulation of uh, for these uh, three sides. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, finally, because of time, I have to stop here. And uh, finally, let me quote Chinese President Xi Jinping's uh, speech at the third ministerial meeting of the Forum of China and CELAC. He said that Latin America and the Caribbean countries are welcome to take an active part in the global development initiative and work together with China to tide over this difficult time and build a global community of development with a shared future. Now, global development, uh, this global development initiative was proposed by Xi Jinping at the UN conference last year. So, so uh, we hope that Latin America will participate in this global development initiative. So let's welcome a better future for the mankind. So thank you very much. And uh, I think uh, uh, the panda, <laughs> the panda and they can hug the Tucano, huh? or the Tucano can uh, uh, embrace the panda. Okay, so thank you very much.